Hi guys, welcome back to yet another episode. Uh, this is quite an exciting one. It touches many people over South Africa because as we get into this episode and we speak about a few of the pieces or projects that um, we've all probably seen or engaged with. And this is kind of going to be the puzzle pieces that puts it together, or at least for me and Alfie, because as we've been looking at some of the projects that our guest Alex has worked on or contributed to, we kind of had a little bit of a light bulb moment, like, wow, I've seen this and I had no idea this was tied to this and I've seen that. And it's actually such a beautiful um, story or we're going to get into it. But in very short, um, I came across a publication or an article on Between 10 and 5, as many of you know, that website. And it spoke about a specific project called the Museum of Plastics, which was a VR virtual uh, digital metaverse gallery or gallery in the metaverse uh, exhibition, so to say. And there was an organization that was um, partially collaborating or responsible for this piece, which was Baz Art. And naturally, I went to go look, hmm, what other projects have this company done so far? went to their website and I actually discovered that they did a piece at Seapoint um, Promenade and many of you probably saw it if you were living in Cape Town at the time, which was this spray painting the artist was doing on the lawns all across the promenade. And it was a very interesting piece. Eventually, if you were there long enough to see it came together as these holding of hands across all the lawns. And that was also actually a Baz art project to my um, to my surprise. And then I decided, OK, I really want to find out a little bit more about what this organization does, where these projects start, how they go about the projects and the people that actually are behind it, because it's a lot of public exhibitions, which is very community driven. So we're very passionate to or passionate about that and to hear a little bit more about that. So today we've got Alexander Tillmans on the show and he is actually the co-founder of Baz Art. And um, yeah, we are so happy to have you here and we're really, really stoked to hear a little bit more about your story. Welcome. Well, thank, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Alfie. Thank you for having me and uh, welcome everybody. Thank you. I think maybe to kick us off, Alex, um, you have a little bit of an accent <laughs> to yeah. give it away. So I'm assuming you're not South African and we actually don't know each other. So can you maybe tell us a little bit of your backstory? Because Baz Art's been around quite a few years. So you've probably been in South Africa, I'm assuming, quite some time. No, that's correct. Um, well, for, for the accent I gave up, I tried to get rid of it and it's just... <laughs> So you have to live with it, or, and I have to live with it too. And um, But I've been trying that for 15 years. Um, so I arrived in 2007. I um, actually worked in the event and tourism industry for a while. My background has got nothing to do with art. Uh, it was in finance, yeah. and I was managing the finance wow. of tourism and event companies. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, <laughs> So yes, I've been around for 15 years. I've been in different industries, in events, as I said, in tourism, then in construction, and then in craft beer, and that led into Baz Art. So I, know it's quite okay. I don't quite see the connection. I mean, I know creatives love beer, and we all probably <laughs> meet around beer and alcohol, but... <laughs> That was mm. that was kind of the start. Um, <laughs> it's kind of the start, but it's a longer story than that. And mm. okay. basically, starting a craft beer or starting a craft brewery, you have to be very creative because not only you need to come up with a logo, a name, uh, but also with a recipe, then... Mm then how are you going to position yourself? There's so much competition out there. Like what are going to differentiate you from the others? What is going to be like your really go to taste, color scheme, everything. So I ended mm -hmm. up working with what are quite a lot of creatives. Um, yeah. And it can be from food pairing to actual design and illustration and arts. So at the end of the day, we positioned the beer in the art industry. And 
because when you look at a nice piece of art, it would be great to drink a great beer. <laughs> okay. And that can't argue with that. <laughs> quite a lot of people. Mm. and work with quite a lot of artists and exchange mm. goods with quite a lot of mm. artists too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and something came up after like five, six years. It was like consistently street artists were struggling to live off their talent. Um, it was consistent. It is, so I was like, well, hang on a second. Well, I don't have a lot of money because I'm really not making money with beer. It's very difficult to make money from beer. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Let's work with street artists and paint in liquor shops. That's going to make me unique. Ah. That's going to provide them work. And we can see what happens after that. Mm. And so that was the start. That was not planned at all. Well, that was planned in the sense that it's, it was like a slow process until I started working with street artists. And then one day we decided, well, let's create an event and let's do a street art festival or a graffiti festival, which is now called International Public Art Festival. And we can speak about the name later. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, cool. Well, for me, I mean, an event is great. I'm going to sell beer. That's cool. And <laughs> it's a platform for street artists. That's great too. And if it's a platform for street artists, well, we all benefit. It's great. So we did that first festival and what happened after it was quite unexpected like we were receiving requests like from hospitals or a hotel or a parking lot saying oh we saw your guy oh we saw your guys festival it's so cool so do you know an artist that can paint my parking lot or my car wash garage or my hospital or wow. my kids playground Okay, it, it's it's wow, but it didn't really start like that. Huh? It's not, <laughs> don't imagine the inbox like filling up and saying like, "Whoa, business is coming!" In. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think we got uh, in the first six months we received three requests or something like okay. that. They were mm -hmm. like, "Well, hang on a second. If we receive three, clearly we can receive six or ten. and mm -hmm. and that's really how it started. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, "Okay, well, the platform is working. We can provide jobs yeah. to artists and." And from there onwards, it was always our promise is that participate to the festival and then we'll find you jobs during the year. And that's mm -hmm. how it started. That's, that's amazing. And like, sure. I, I'd like us to really dive into the ecosystem aspect of what you're talking about, because this isn't really a service that you're providing to one, you know, one yeah. side of the fence. It's sort of like the artists are being served, the organizations are being served, and you guys are kind of like bringing everybody together. And I want us to definitely dive into that, but I want to roll roll the clock back a little bit because we okay. skipped over Let's your story back. really quickly. Um, and there were some 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 interesting things that you mentioned. I think that especially maybe now looking back don't seem that that um, that impactful, but I think for for the listeners and especially for people who are sort of finding their way, it might be useful to hear a little bit about because you know you said you started in finance. Now I think a lot of people have got a good idea of what it's like to you know, be in a finance job, although it may not be perfect, they've at least got an idea. Then you said you kind of shifted into like, you know, many different things and ended up in craft beer. Now to go from finance to craft beer is actually a massive, <laughs> is a massive shift. So can you maybe talk a little bit about the change? Um, I don't know, were you working a job beforehand where you're a freelancer when you were in finance? And then when you move from finance to kind of like doing your own thing, like what did that look like? Did you kind of like take the That's lead to be become, an entrepreneur? It's going to become more and more intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I say I worked in finance, I was the financial manager or the CFO or the financial director um, mm. of a company, of a tourism mm -hmm. and event company, uh, working all over Southern Africa. And I did that for quite a number of years as a due and diligent employee. And then mm -hmm. I got a little bit bored of being employee of that industry. Yeah. And then I got the exact same job in the construction industry. So I was the CFO of a construction <laughs> company. Yeah. And that's just a normal job shift. Like it's, mm -hmm. you do the same thing. You manage the HR, the legal, the accounting, the budgeting and the purchasing department. That's the job of mm -hmm. a CFO. And... And when I was in the construction industry, I was working a lot in East Africa. And okay. I told my boss, I told my boss, well, you know what? I'd like to go back to Cape Town and I really want to build a brewery. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like that. <laughs> and 
she said, well, hang on a second. I, I don't want you to leave. And I was like, well, I just told you. Oh, that's my plan. That's what I want to do. And she said, well, hang on a sec. Don't do that. Um, stay with me another year, and I'll help you do that. Because we have a construction company. We have access wow. to engineers, equipment, sure, uh, sure, knowledge. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And I was like, cool. That's great. I'll stay with you another year, and then we'll start that. The, the puzzle then, pieces so. are just kind of falling into place because <laughs> I just actually realized you, you're from Belgium, right? Yep. That's right. And that now makes kind of the, <laughs> I want to start a brewery, <laughs> but also your love for Cape Town. I'm being very stereotypical. <laughs> yeah, so for sure. So there's a lot of beer knowledge in Belgium. Um, and the goal was to bring it here, which, which happened because yeah. my business partner were from Belgium. Um, and I said were because nice. I stopped that because it didn't mm -hmm. work. Um, and we can speak about failure later. And, mm -hmm. um, and so my business partners were from Belgium. The knowledge was acquired from there, which was cool, but it was also very trendy. Go back 10 years, 10, mm. 12 years. Uh, craft beer, yeah. Craft yeah, beer. Was... Darling Brew, sure. Jack Black, everybody was drinking yes. craft beer. You could go to any concert, event, whatever. You had craft beer. So, no, it was also, like, very trendy. So yeah. the goal was to be on trend. Wow. Sure. Okay. Okay. So you got your... your your boss to to kind of make this deal you stay a little bit longer mm -hmm. and they kind of gonna help you construction wise yeah um construction putting deal together i mean it's it's an expensive exercise i don't know if uh, mm. if you want to build anything decent you have to start with 15 million rent i don't have that at all uh, <laughs> so you need banks you need investors i mean it's mm -hmm. it's not just uh it's just a little, like, huh, let me get Quick that. little building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's the starting point if you build, want to build something decent. So, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so we started that. Um, and it was a very fun adventure for seven years. Um, but it was very slow. Yeah. It's a very competitive world. You don't make a lot of money making beer. I mean, it's, it's a love of passion and, and hard work. Mm -hmm. And just before COVID, I stopped. Um, wow. Luckily, just before COVID. Hmm. Good timing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was very good timing. <laughs> sure. That's mm. actually also quite an interesting insight. I think, you know, as uh, South Africans and South Africans uh, love their alcohol, it's a, there's a big market for it. Um, I actually don't know a lot of people. I know a few people in Gauteng that's in that space or at least owning restaurants, but not necessarily a brewery. But um, yeah, I didn't know it's it's not a very thriving space, or the the profit margins are so low. Mm. Yeah. But so you, well, you have to understand you it's competitive put a product on the say. shelf at twenty five rand, and if you have mm -hmm. two rand in your pocket, that's great. So you need a lot sure. of two rands to wow. have just a salary. And you're that's always competing a against back. AB and Bev. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. so yeah, and so basically to differentiate myself, working with street artists was the was the mm -hmm. go-to and the and the medium. And well, if you want fun facts and interesting links between the art and the beer, um, as you know, First Thursday is still striving in, mm -hmm. in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And but when I started, it was really like a gallery space. You would walk from one gallery to the next. There was not a lot of drinks out there at that time. Yeah. When I, so it's a bit due to me or thanks to me <laughs> because I put bars <laughs> in each and every gallery <laughs> and on the stoop wow. of each and every restaurant. <laughs> because I knew all the gallery owners and the artists that were on show. Yes, so, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Wow. so yeah, so it's a That's little amazing. bit due to me that people are drinking so much at first Thursdays. <laughs> um, and then big brands started to come in and then they mm -hmm. asked for, for rent and renting space. And then, well, I couldn't afford to, to, pay, to yeah. pay the advertising fee. But yeah, I, I started that vibe of uh, drinking it those Thursdays. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's okay. incredible. So, so like we've, we've kind of covered when you, when you're first kind of working in a job, you play the CFO role for a while, hopped between, mm -hmm. um, you know, a, um, a few different companies playing that role. And then you kind of, 
made the decision to start your own thing. You know, you find this business partner in back back home in Belgium. You start the brewery that gets off the ground and you do that for seven years, which is a long time. You know, you, mm. you kind of like establish yourself in that space. And then you kind of start to get this this second niche, this like side route that's going to take you into the creative world. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit about the point at which you you kind of made the decision, you know, like where you took your foot off the accelerator on the beer, like a lot, and then started really looking at art? Like what, what did that actually look like? Because, I mean, the first event is obviously not when it happens. That's not nearly enough to, you know, sustain a business model. What did that transformation actually look like? Well, it took uh, it took at least three years because wow. the first event, the first international public art festival, was in 2017, mm -hmm. and I stopped the beer just before COVID, so 2020. So it definitely mm -hmm. took three years to mm -hmm. to shift, or that one basically takes over mm -hmm. the other one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, yeah, it's just like. I would say I was spending maybe five days a week on the beer, on the beer company. And, um, and suddenly it became four and then it became three and then it became two. And then, and then the other one started growing. Uh, mm -hmm. but there was definitely a moment where things were running in parallel. Uh, we, we had a shared office, which was very funny, um, where both teams <laughs> were side by side working. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, but it, it took, it took a good three years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it, it takes I, I about three it years. It makes sense. Like a business to, like everybody says, ah, oh, to start a business, it takes three years. I, I do mm -hmm. think to start a proper business, it really takes seven, <laughs> but <laughs> after three years, you kind of know where you are. <laughs> yeah. You know where you're going at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know where you're know going. Where you're yeah. going. <laughs> or where you yeah, should be okay. going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I think okay, that's the interest, mm -hmm. interesting learning I can say from, um, mm -hmm. from that is that you start with an idea, but it doesn't mean you're going to end with that idea. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, three years is quite a while to, to shift and the, to have that continuity. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. when I speak very fast, I can say, yes, I did a brewery and then I went public arts. Yeah. But <laughs> no, there was a transition. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that took quite a while. And um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, um, I, I, I'm not sad. Um, actually, I learned so much to be in that competitive world where marketing plays such an important role that every money you make, you reinvest in marketing. And mm -hmm. those are key learnings for me that now I can really apply. Um, because do you know many street artists that advertise? No, not many probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. but if you want to create an industry for yourself, and if you want to have jobs, well, you need to. Uh, you need to be out there. Mm. So yeah, so I learned a lot from that competitive environment, and and can transfer those yeah that knowledge to to the visual arts scene. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Um, <clears throat> okay, so so like we i think we've got a good idea of the the kind of like the rough outline of the story and i want to get into a little bit more of the of the nitty-gritty um i'm hoping that one of the things we can do is talk about some of the artists whose stories have stand has have stood out for you but before mm -hmm. we do that can you maybe tell us a little bit about like what does a project typically look like from start to finish like is it usually you find some artists and then you find the like good opportunities or spaces for them or does a business reach out to you first and say, we're looking for something and then you, you find and source artists. Do you have like a catalog of artists that you work with? Like what is a, what does the workflow actually look like? Okay. So maybe before answering that, mm -hmm. uh, I'll say, so we work with two components, as you rightly say, we work with, let's call them clients or funders on the one side mm -hmm. that want some, some service mm -hmm. and we work with artists on the other side. Artists, we help them find jobs. That has been what we said from day one, from the first festival, we're going to help you find some jobs. We're going to help you make a living of out of your art. Um, that's that will never change on the client side. It took us a little bit of time to realize that we were actually offering a service, which is 
let's use art as a form of communication. Let's get your message across using mm -hmm. art. We're going to work with artists and we're going to create a communication campaign. It can be very arty, it can be very branded, which is a bit more boring, and it can be a little bit of the two. Mm -hmm. And so those are the two components we work with. Mm -hmm. um, so when a client comes, or if we think about a project, um, if you want to understand the workflow or the process, we work with, we work with, we've called that the equation for success. We realize that there's no, there's no other way. If you don't fill those parameters, nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's quite simple. Do you have a concept? Like, do you know what you want to do? Or we can work mm -hmm. on it together. You, you might not have the concept like clear and crisp. Mm -hmm. We can, well, we need a concept. If we don't have a concept, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. We need a planning, like a duration, a timeline, like when do you want things to happen? Mm -hmm. We need a location. Like, do you want us to paint a wall in Johannesburg or in Cape Town? Like, two different stories. And we need some design aspects. And we realized that as soon as those four parameters are clear, yes, we can, we can, we can work with you. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can develop the project. So it's not, I think it applies to a lot of industry. Um, mm -hmm. But what we realize is that it avoids wasting a lot of time. Like, oh, I, I'd love to do an advertising campaign. It needs to be arty. I'm not sure where it can go. And I don't know what the budget is. I'm like, yeah. okay, I can make as many pre presentation and I can and I can introduce you to as many artists as you want. <laughs> so it also almost sounds like you guys facilitate. I'm not going to say a dating process, but a matching process, because you say, yes. or you just said, I can introduce you to a couple of artists. So is that kind of part of the process to see which of the artists, their style, their intention, their interests fits with this concept and kind of ride with that rather than, yeah. Yeah, there's usually a, a lot. Of, the last thing we do is introduce the artist. It's really the last thing. So if you want to know like the backstory of everything and how it works, <laughs> it's yeah. the last thing. And I'll tell you why just now. Um, because there's a lot of work to be done with the client before, like which mm -hmm. location, what time, um, do you like abstract or realism, realism? Um, do you want, do you want rather a statue or a sculpture or do you really want a mural? Um, what do you want to do with it? What's your call to action? Like, okay, we, you say, if we paint bus stops in pink, it will generate awareness on, I don't know what, uh, some, some, some issue. But what's the call to action? What do you want to achieve with it? So there's mm -hmm. a lot of work we do with the clans mm -hmm. before actually saying, oh, I think the best mm -hmm. person to paint bus stops is pink, in pink is this guy. Wow. Um, because if we do the opposite, if we do the opposite and we say, okay, here is five guys or here, is, here are five guys, choose, choose the one you prefer. If they say, well, I don't like that one, I don't like that one, I don't like that one, those guys will never be able to work on the project. And it's mm. crazy because it is, they're disqualified, even though they might mm. be very good, but mm. because we don't understand the briefing, just by looking yeah. at the Instagram, they keep, maybe they have too many cat pictures on the Instagram, they get disqualified. <laughs> ah, okay. So, so. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. And I think... It's such a good it, it's such a good idea because it's like I mean in the fine art space you would also typically have that you wouldn't you probably wouldn't have the collector going and f like buying the art themselves it, they might have a curator mm -hmm. in between that actually goes to the shows and identifies the valuable like the valuable pieces and then they communicate to that that to the curator and in a sense it's almost like you guys are doing that process but before the art has been created you know you find a need from mm -hmm. a client. You get them to describe everything and do all the things that artists don't like doing. Yeah, <laughs> you, <they hate. laughs> you get that solidified and then pass that on to the artist. Yeah. Do I have that yeah. right? Yeah, totally. Mm. So that budget is clear, timeline is clear, we know what we paint, how we paint, what mm. they want. 
and nobody can blame no one afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Sure. And, and it shows it shows that um, for me it's something that I, I really like fight for at the moment. It's to say, oh look at that uh, that beautiful mural. It's the work of this guy. And I'm like, there's so many moving parts behind it. Like there's so many people that have been involved. It's not just the mm. work of one person. And I always use that example, like, oh, it's that actor that made that movie. Well, as far as I know, one actor doesn't make one movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hundreds of people yeah. making movies with an actor. And, and it's the same in, in visual art or in performing art. I mean, you, or in, mu in music as well. Like, it's very seldom that one musician will be the band, the writer, the distributor, the, the studio mm. recorder. Like, no. Mm. <laughs> it wouldn't be everything. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. I must say, I really um, have to amend you guys for like what you place at the the heart of your process. Like you said it yourself, you know the the artist is a is a big part, but also the the purpose it serves and um, creating really creating uh, a really not a democracy for them, but you're really advocating for the artist with the with the workflow that you guys have set up, which is really beautiful to see in you know in a in a country or society where it's not all not always a a medium or profession that's either taken very seriously or very appreciated publicly, mm -hmm. but rather in small niche spaces so it's it's quite nice to hear thank you. Um, I can I can develop a little bit on that if you want, and mm -hmm. because again it was a process and it was probably uh, mm -hmm. it's only now that we understand like the true value of what we do after mm -hmm. those seven seven eight years. So okay, the goal number one was to help artists make a living. Okay, great, we find them jobs, they paint or they sculpt or they install, and that's cool. But then what we realize is that if what we do has, has got a positive impact or a nice story or something that people can learn from um, or interact with in a positive way, wherever you put that artwork, that public artwork, um, it will have a positive social impact. And when I say positive mm -hmm. social impact, it sounds like a big word, but it's something like neighbors will start chatting with each other. Yep, yep, yep. Just that. Yep, yep. Neighbors Social will engineering. Start cleaning, <laughs> so neighbors will start cleaning in front of or around the piece because, because mm -hmm. it just looks nicer when it's clean. And, and because they start chatting with the neighbors, it kind of unifies the neighborhood. Like people have, have a common purpose, like have a common mm -hmm. idea. And, and for us, that was like a big discovery, especially me coming from finance. Sure. Like, yeah. remember that? <laughs> Discovering that? I was like, wow, really? Mm. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't believe my eyes. And, and now, even closer to time, what I realize is that it also creates another economic impact that we didn't know. Um, and the other economic impact is that marketing agencies start to use public art in the advert or the film industry start shooting in front of public art pieces or um, much much more relatable so, is yeah. tour guides do tours and pretty much every day yes, yes, yes. and I mean, there's so many that we don't even, we just wow. see the number of downloads of the maps and we know, whoa, so many people are downloading the map. And um, mm. so it means that people are actually making a living of, of mm. those public artwork. Yeah, um, yeah. Like a butterfly effect. Yeah. And that mm. was, yeah. that we, we didn't think about it, but obviously they're there and people found a use of it or people found mm -hmm. a use for it, um, which is amazing. I can imagine it has has a big impact uh, on the the tourism space as well. I was just, you know, the mm -hmm. project that came to mind was like the the towers in Johannesburg. That specific project, I can imagine how things, the impact of of that could just ripple into so many avenues. 
like you said, it brings a community together. It builds a lot of pride around the space. It changes the level of attraction to a space, mm. the, the level of interaction and engagement outside communities have with that community in that space. It's, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. It's sure. <coughs> yeah. mm. Just yeah, so, processing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so those were the learnings of... Uh, of mm. Yes, yeah, seven, eight years of work. And, uh, but yeah. it, it, again, it's not like uh, I'm summarizing in, in one minute, but it took mm -hmm. eight years. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, and so, you know, as, as I mentioned, I was hoping that we could maybe talk about either some of the artist's stories or maybe a project that has specifically stood out for you. Um, I think especially when you're working in, in, in a creative space or really at any space where you're helping helping a person tell their story or express themselves. I find you always come across very, very interesting stories or journeys that bring them to you. Like, are there any that immediately come to mind or that have stood out for you? No. <laughs> no, because, no, no, but because there's so many. Uh, no, but because there's so many. I mean, every, I would say every week, there's a new story. Um, so the first one that would come to mind is the one of the one of today because today we were or my team or our team was at the school and it's a school we've been working with for the past few years but they don't have budget for refurbishment and it's like they yeah it was not looking very good and and uh, we had a group of foreigners that were at the civic center and wanted to do a street art tour with community project. And we're like, okay, great. We can put that together, but let's do that for that school so that we can paint that school. Um, the project in itself is interesting, but what is, I'm more interested in is the, is the story of the artist, um, mm. whose name is Ras Silas, uh, originally from Joburg, now moved to Cape Town. And he used to be an art teacher. And we did some work with him, yeah, six years ago at the beginning, yeah, six years ago, um, to do, yeah, workshop and a little exhibition. And he was, he was a teacher. And after that, he decided, well, why don't I become an artist? And which is a big step from yeah. teaching, well, art yeah. teaching to artist and say, yeah. well, I'll stop teaching and I'll dedicate my life to becoming a self-sustained artist mm. and and it's very interesting to see that yes he has developed his his uh his body of work his mission it's you know what he wants to tackle and and now we're five six years later and yes he is in galleries yes he is listed mm. online um he still has a side job because he loves it but but he still needs it but we can clearly see the evolution and the potential of of that guy and the journey he has mm -hmm. had from, yeah, from leaving Joburg, coming to Cape Town, empty-handed, developing, starting a studio from from zero, mm -hmm. and uh, and mm -hmm. the ups and downs, uh, but still like striving and following his journey and his mission of becoming a, a full-time artist. Mm -hmm. so you that said is the one of today, Russ Silas. Russ Motte. Silas. Okay, we'll try and get that into the, the, the show notes for em, everyone listening to, to, to go and yeah. have a look at some of, some of the work. So that's, that's the, I guess that's the one of today. Um, mm -hmm. What would be another, another funny one? Um, yeah, another, another artist, um, again, from Joburg. Next, I'll, I'll do another one from Joburg and then we'll speak about the Cape Town ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, his name is Debonks um, from Bongani, and Debonks is his street art name. Um, he came to the festival. He, it was the first time that he was taking a plane, and basically wow. first time leaving Joburg or Rustenburg, and came to Cape Town, attended the first festival, did a great job, and slow. Very soon after that, we started working with Apple Music, and he was chosen as the guy who would do the portraits wow. for the Apple Music artist. Yo. Crazy. And That's the amazing. same year, the same year, Charlize Theron invited us to New York for the gala dinner, and he was going to be Yo. the artist that paints live. 
And so that shows wow. you how from basically attending a simple mm. festival in the mm. next door city suddenly mm-hmm. like spiraled into yeah into three four years of crazy work um mm. and uh, and yeah and getting international recognition in and in features mm. in, yeah. in magazines yeah. and books um, around the world as one of the emerging south african artists so that's sure. another that's story amazing. and and then we have in Cape Town, let's take Wayne. Uh, his street art name is Conform. Um, background in marketing. Um, and he's, he has a very specific style, which mixes illustration, simple lines, and, and futurism. And... Um, and from the beginning, he, he attended the first festival, and um, and from the beginning, he said, "You know, I don't want to. I do my style. I don't do branding. I don't bend my style. This is what I do. And if you want to find some job opportunities for me, this is the way I paint, and this is uh, mm. that's it. And and we we often." T- in the past, argued a little bit, like because of course I was trying to bend the rules and say, no, you can do a bit more of that, or let me challenge you, and and mm. um, and yeah, and over the last seven years, um, I think we have worked together maybe 20, 30 times. So it's like wow. regular, it's regular jobs and regular. Even though at the beginning it was difficult because it mm. was. You had to, you ha- yeah, we have to force the client to like that style. But by now, mm. we have that common understanding where I quickly know, okay, this client, I can convince them to work with him, so that's cool. And mm. um, and I think he's got a great potential because he's so focused on his style and his way of, of, of seeing his art that I'm sure it, he will become a very good read-on artist at some stage. But it takes mm-hmm. a long time to become a renowned artist. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's not True. an overnight thing. True. I want to really talk about the festival, but before we jump yeah. to the festival, I do have a little bit of a question around um, how you've experienced the relationships you've built with the artists, because you know, artists in general, creative people, um, people who have some profession where they have a sense of expression or self-expression, have certain state characteristics and coming from an environment like being a CFO at a construction company or uh, the company before that, you're not very surrounded with that archetype of people. And I'm quite interesting personally for you, what was the experience starting to deal with a bunch of artists and how how have you managed that? Has there been any difficulty? Was it very easy? Is it still very easy? Um, well, thankfully, we work as a team of people at Bazaar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so we're about ten in the office, so we can <laughs> we can dispatch work according to everyone's strengths. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. But nonetheless, yes, we started Bazaar. <laughs> we were two, and uh, um, I, to answer your question, it's something I fight. Um, I fight for is to fact that to the fact that artists are also normal people, and and one of the latest conversation I had with some academics was like, oh, let's do a special curses for artists to give them business skills. And I was like, uh, well, why special for artists? Because if you start as an artist and you have to hire an assistant, it's the exact same if you start as a plumber and have to hire an assistant. Mm -hmm. This is no difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you start um, creating Okay, choose its type of a it's sort of craft and artisan too. But if you start creating a product and you want to put a toothpaste and you want to put it on the shelf <laughs> or you create a canvas and you find a gallery, it's going to be a same selling process too. 
So there's a lot of similarities in terms of, of, of the business structure for yeah. art and for, for plumbing. Or take an architect. If you want to be an architect and create an architect studio mm -hmm. and start hiring people, it's going to be the same process as being an artist and start creating an artist studio. So I really fight for, for those, like, categorizing artists as those kind of extreme behavior people that no one wants to deal with. No, I do think there are a lot of professional artists that actually really understand the ins and outs and how mm -hmm. they, what they mm -hmm. have to do and, and yeah, and are actually very business-minded. Mm. Like Good. That. I love that you're saying that so everyone else listening can hear that because obviously there is a lot of stigmas and um, I mean, we've mm -hmm. also heard a lot of stereotypes on the show. Um, we often hear the stereotype around creatives shouldn't start their own businesses. And we've chatted to this uh, to a few previous guests before as well, who are creatives who have started their own businesses and run it completely like they're brilliant. They're successful. Mm. And um It's mm. also nice to hear someone else's uh, perspective on that and just kind of validate um, those things. Uh, for, for me, for me, it comes from the principle that it's very hard to do a business by yourself. You can be very, very creative, but then you'll probably be very bad in selling yeah. or mm -hmm. in just implementing just putting mm -hmm. the, putting your creations mm -hmm. together and and I'm sure everyone who listens will relate to that there's some some artists who don't create themselves uh, mm -hmm. there are some artists who create themselves but keep everything in the closet or in their garage I mean well mm -hmm. great but that's not gonna move I mean <laughs> so so you need other people you need to surround yourself I'm not saying you need to yeah. hire a team of people but you need to surround yourself with people that can patch the gap you cannot patch. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think you actually highlight such a such a good point. And maybe that's a very, or like a key learning, because if we speak very general, uh, artists can be more self-reliant than another type of profession or any profession where you're a craftsman. It can be more self, like, You work by yourself. You you quite mm. used to being self dependent, uh, self sufficient, but mm. that might be like the the barrier for you then to start a business. It's not that you don't have the skills. It's the actually more the soft skill and the ability to accept help, to ask for help, to collaborate, and that's mm. more the skill, not the not the fact that we don't have the skills to actually start a business or run a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's 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 a good point, Stefan. You, you know, as as I'm kind of listening um, and sort of looking back how the conversation has gone so far, I think we've talked a lot about the what the engagement between um, Baz and the the clients or the the companies is like. Not that much about what it's like with the artists and you guys. So, so can you maybe talk to us a little bit first about the because from what you've described, it's almost like the The event is your inflow of art artistic talent, and that's where you foster new talent. You find the people and then integrate them into your 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 network or whatever it might be. Can you talk a little bit about firstly with the with the event? How does that work? What is it about? Um, a little bit more of the details on that. Yeah, so you understood perfectly. So the event um, for us is kind of a platform for recruitment. Um, we put an open call out there. It's always 50% South African, 50% international, um, so that we get knowledge coming in, but we mm. can push people up um, from South Africa. And, and it, we challenge each and every artist that participates. We don't say, come and do your thing and, and leave. We're like, okay, here is the context. Here is where you will be. You have to understand that context and whatever you're going to create is going to have to speak to that context and with those parameters. So mm. we push the boundaries of the artist. It doesn't matter if you are number one in uh, the US or, or number 65 in Greece and number 10 in South Africa will push you, will push you mm. to, to challenge you and to, um, to get to, a, yeah, to another level. And from... Mm -hmm. 
with those challenges in mind, what what happens is that when we work with the artist, the festival is about 10 days. When we work with wow. the artists for 10 days, we get to know them. And we get to know them pretty well from yeah. getting up in the morning, <laughs> work during the day, Chill. when there is work, and going to bed at night. Mm-hmm. And, and for That's us... That's a commitment. It is, it <laughs> for, is a commitment. For anyone. <laughs> yeah, it is a commitment. But, but what happens is that during those 10 days, obviously we chat a lot and we get to understand each other a lot. Mm. And... And I can give you simple takeouts that, that we learned. Like some artists don't like kids. Well, I'll never send them to paint in a school. So like, why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> some artists yeah. are scared of heights. Mm. Why would I put them on a super high wall? Like, <laughs> no. Mm. But you don't know. And mm. you don't know if you haven't spent those 10 days and you haven't, and you haven't chat and you haven't pushed those mm. boundaries. And, mm. and you haven't seen the interaction with the public. So, so for us, the festival is really key because it will, it, it, it's impossible to find work for people we don't know. It's mm. not just a, it's, we mm. cannot you tell guys... the story. We don't understand the background. We don't understand what you like doing or what you don't like. So we have mm. to spend those 10 days together. Do you pick the people who are allowed to attend the festival or do artists buy a ticket or kind of how do you get into the festival? Um, It's an online form, which is always on the website. It's open call to artists. Um, We usually get about uh, between 150 and 200 Mm applications and of which we select 20 artists. Okay. So, Quite a yeah, nice so intimate bad, group as well to spend 10 yes, days with. Yes. So we, we did the first festival, we onboarded 40 artists. That was clearly a mistake because then you don't have time to spend with each and everybody. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but from there onwards, we decided 2025 20, is a good average. Mm. And then we can really work together and we can really like, yeah, fulfill the promise of working together mm. in the long term. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Okay. Okay. So... <clears throat> I'm, I'm I'm putting myself in the mind of, of of the artist, so you know I've put in my like I I see this this um this website. They say they've got an open call for artists to come and join a ten day festival. I put in my my application. I get selected. Um, so a couple of questions. Roughly, when in the year does it typically happen? And then what what can an artist actually expect from the experience? You know, do they kind of like live there and they they do the art in the space? And then stay with the other artists. Is it sort of like you know you get put in your own place and you kind of work? Like, what does it actually look look like from the perspective of the person participating in the festival? And then maybe could you also talk a little bit like after they've done the art, is there like a thing where audience like the audience like the the viewers come in and watch? Do you have like a a fair open to the public? How does public, how does that yeah. piece work? Um. Okay, so um, yeah, to put your application, you can put your application anytime. Obviously, we we market it closer to the festival around October, mm-hmm. November. We mm-hmm. ask anyone who submits an application to have one reference in terms of public art. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So that so that we know that at least you have attempted something, whether it's a sculpture, an installation, uh, but then you can explain in your application, the process mm. you went through so that we understand a little bit what you've been trying to achieve, if you struggled or if you didn't struggle, like so that we know a little bit where you fit in the artistic mm-hmm. scene. And and it can be anything. Right? It can be a performance in the public. It can be, a yeah, as I said, an installation. It can be lights. It can be sculptures. It can be... And street art is where we started. So we're mainly known for street art, but we welcome every form. And, and then during maybe two months, we work on the concept with the artists. Uh, mm. As I said, the context is important because we want something that will, yeah, that will please the people. You don't want to wake up in front of something you hate every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be cool. So, mm. so yeah, we have to work together so that we, we make sure that whatever you're going to do is going to be something that actually carries a certain optimism, uh, certain mm-hmm. values, um, or something that, yeah, people were like, ah, that's cool. And they'll start chatting about it because what we mm-hmm. want the outcome to be is communication. 
we want pe to people to speak about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it should be a positive conversation. Not a negative conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is the work we do with the artists for like, yeah, basically two months before the festival. And then during the festival, um, even if you don't like to sleep with other people, which is perfectly fine. Uh, breakfast is organized every morning. We gather all together for breakfast. Um, and during the day, during the day, you're a little bit on your own because you work on your own piece. Um, okay. So for five days, for five days, the half of the festival, you, you, you are, you are on your own. You have logistical support. So when you need stuff, somebody will drop stuff. Um, same for your lunch, same for your water. So you'll get, you'll get logistics visits, but you'll kind of be working on your piece by yourself. And, and it's only from day five that the public comes in. Oh, ah, so the public okay. sees the last mm -hmm. step so that, mm. so that you so, can actually so prepare everything a little bit. Yeah. So they can see the oh. process a little bit, mm. but you, you're not stressed because on day one, you're pretty yeah. stressed. So it's like yeah. blank mm -hmm. canvas. <laughs> you freak out. And you, <laughs> you don't want to be disturbed by the public. Yeah. Um, and every, every evening there's an activity. Again, you're free to join or if you're too tired because you worked for 12 hours and it was sunny, windy and everything else that it can be in Cape Town. Sometimes you're just too tired and you're like, okay, bye. Uh, but yeah, every evening there's an activity. Um, or a little workshop or a little side visit mm -hmm. or yeah, something with food and drinks where people can mingle and chat about the mm -hmm. day and chat about what went well, what was difficult, what can we do tomorrow. So yeah, that's amazing. That's the normal life sure. of the, of wow. the festival. Yeah. Sounds and amazing. I wish I could join it. It really does sound <laughs> yeah. fun. <laughs> well, next year. Sure. Mm. We'll definitely come and watch. Mm. Yes. For sure, mm -hmm. we just missed it, Alfie. Mm -hmm. I think it, it was it was just passed in March, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, it's wow. usually yeah. end of February, beginning of March. Next year will be end of February. Okay, nice. Noted. Okay, mm -hmm. so okay, so 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 you know you, you've walked us through the process. This artist kind of you know they get some time to spend with your team, um, you know, with the the best team. Um, they kind of get given the context of a project. They do this piece of art on day five. People start to um, actually start uh, walking through and seeing the art. Um, <clears throat> I'd assume like the end of the event, especially for the artist, it's like it's kind of like any big event. It's kind of like you're on this high and all the emotions are there and it feels like you're in the middle of the art scene and then the event ends and then it's back to normal. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure for the artist, it's always a little bit of a like... Um, you know? Yeah, some people some people cry, some people want to stay longer. Yeah, of course, of course we get all of that. Um it's yeah, it's it's interesting because every year there's this we have the same patterns. Um mm -hmm. like I would say out of twenty artists, seventeen or eighteen will start on day one. Like they will be on it mm -hmm. from day one but then there are always two where somehow something didn't quite work uh, whether the artwork is not fitting or whether it's a question of location or whether suddenly the the owner of the space is like no uh no i don't like that person or like th that can happen too and then for those two it's it's, and it's also why we don't invite the public. It's we have to get them up to speed with everybody before day five. Mm. So we mm. spend a lot of time with them just to make sure they'll be able to perform before before yeah. the official opening. Um, and it's always always like that, and we've tried to prevent it. There's always two that, for whatever reason, it, mm -hmm. it takes time. And but that's fine because as soon as they're in, they're, they're super in, like they are full on. Focus. And then, for whatever reason, around day seven, when the public is around, everybody kind of gets exhausted because you know you can see the finish line, but you're not there yet. <laughs> so, so it's been seven days. It's quite long. And mm. then, and then, 
yes, someone will drop the ball. Someone will be like tired and be like, ah, I don't want to do with it. I don't want anything to do with it. So there's mm -hmm. always one person. It could be out of the artist or it can be out of the team. So you have to realize <laughs> artist plus team is like 50 people. So wow. there will be one in 50 that wants to... That's a lead. great success rate. <laughs> you're, you're such an intense So you have to go and fish that retreat. person back and say, no, it's cool. You, you're like... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and then it's the last day and yeah everybody is very happy and what we do on the last day is that we go around we do like a private tour for the the mm. team and the artist yeah. so that group of 50 people it's kind of a private party tour tour yeah. sorry mm. where we go around each artwork and each artist explain his process his oh, journey nice. and, so and everything Wow. And that's usually oh, where, so cool. where people start crying and be emotional. Yeah, mm -hmm. can imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we go party. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Alex, we're almost running out of time. And at the beginning yeah. of the episode, you mentioned um, when you start something, any business, you kind of have this idea, a vision of what it's going to be, what it's going to serve, and then you end up doing either something completely different or something bigger. I'm quite curious, at the very beginning, when you guys were just two and you started Baz Art, what was that idea that you thought you were going to do? And what is it that you think you're doing right now? And what is also like in the horizon? What are you guys trying to do maybe a little bit ahead in the future? Okay, so when we started and we received those one, two, three requests of uh, the children's hospital and that hotel, and yeah. we're like, okay, cool, some people need artists and let's find more of those people. Let's just mm -hmm. find places for artists to paint. Well, what we realize by now is that painting is not enough. There's not enough work for all the artists. Um, we have to add layers. We have to add something to it uh, from a location point of view. So that's why we have a small office in Joburg. That's why we have worked in Nairobi, in, in Accra, in Lagos, wow. just because so that we could start pushing artists to travel a bit more. Uh, which is great for their career, but also because there's not enough work. Um, mm. So so that's what we have been doing now. And because we realized that there's not enough work for just street art, we're like, well, why don't we make street art even more interesting by adding different things like augmented reality? Because mm -hmm. suddenly people are like, oh, augmented reality. Can I get one too? Yeah. You need the artist to paint first <laughs> and then you get the augmented reality. <laughs> So basically finding innovation mm. tricks so that suddenly it becomes trendy again and you want mm. more. Um, okay. So that's what we have been doing a lot at the moment mm -hmm. and which leads into the future where we see that there's a great potential for more collaboration between artists of different genre of visual and performing music and visual Um uh, who did I forget? Uh, yeah, the writers. Poets, yeah, so basically, all of them. basically combining different form of art to create something even bigger, and mm -hmm. and you can do that locally, you can do that internationally. Um, it doesn't matter, but it's really what we're focusing on is combining different form of art in the always in the public scene. Man, that's amazing. This is so, so we have exciting. To start that. <laughs> sure. Okay. That's no, that that is amazing, and I think we're we're, we're sort of coming round to the to the end of our conversation, um, and it's been really cool. I think it's it, it's good to hear that there are more people out there trying to support the creative endeavor <clears throat> in general. Um, and maybe to close off, could you just maybe share with us a little bit for <clears throat> either if there is a company out there that needs a parking lot painted, or there is an artist who is interested in trying their luck at the next. Um, at the next festival, where can they find out about you guys or where would be the best place for them to reach you? Um, best place is definitely start by the website, bazart.co.za, mm -hmm. B-A-Z hyphen A-R-T.co.za. And send an email 
hello at bazaar.ca.za. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then we'll get back to you. All right. Um, and we'll definitely include those in the show notes. Um, but I think on behalf of everybody listening uh, and also on behalf of everybody in South Africa who gets to look at the wonderful art that you guys have brought into the world, thank you. And thank you for your time. It's really been a great no, Thank you very much. It was, it was a very nice conversation and we can do it again. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. I love that. Very excited to see what you guys uh, do next. And yeah. Thanks, Alex. It's um, like Alfie said, it's it's really amazing to see great work with great intention being done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Definitely. And to everybody listening, thank you very much for your t for your time, whether it's the morning or the evening. Have a great day, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Bye bye.